never said this to you before. My eyes are falling out, Keith. Subscribe button's down there if you yeah, haven't done so already. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Tom. free. Tom, yeah. This is free. He works here full time, would you believe? I am an adult. I think I'm the oldest here on time. By a mile, Tom. Amazing. It's <laughs> some news. A departing WWE star seems to have been written off TV. A former champion could be returning to WWE part-time. And some possible plans for a WrestleMania 36 match have been revealed. We'll get to that very soon. He could slam a tornado and dry up a sea when he lives for the moment. There ain't no uh, swear word with me. That is the words of Matt Hardy's theme music from 2003, I want to say. V1! No fun, uh, Matt Hardy could have said goodbye last night. It very much looks like yeah. it. In fact, he said goodbye on Twitter. Literally the word goodbye <laughs> with a screen grab of last night. So if you haven't seen Raw uh, from last night, really interesting episode. A few big bits happening. Uh, we'll get to that in Graded and WTF coming up later. However, Matt Hardy comes out to confront the evil Randy Orton to defend his BFF <laughs> Edge because those two well, of course they love each other. I mean, they got his misses. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they are friends now. They are legit friends now. It was a curious choice anyway. Mm. But Randy Orton hitting him with the RKO, concerto, and it looks like Matt Hardy has been written off TV. His contract expires very, very soon. I saw a really interesting tweet uh, that Matt responded to asking like, what are his top priorities in wrestling moving forward? And I, I can't remember the, the five in order, but number three, I think, was more TV time or consistent TV time. Number two was money. Number one was creative control. And that's something that he's definitely not going to get in WWE, but maybe he'll get elsewhere as part of the Dark Order. There was a little, little teaser of that. He likes to drop in these little nuggets to give us a little bit of something to chew on in the uh, in his videos, Free the Delete. Yes. And uh, it was a little bit of back and forth he had with Vanguard one where he said, I'm Exol, I'm Exol, I'm Exol. Exhausted with what you're saying. So it was like a little teaser to go, he's, he's going to be the exalted one, isn't he? Yeah, I, I, he's, I, I think I'll almost definitely. I'm fine with that. He might not be there because he does love working people as well. He's done this so, yeah. so many, he's very, very good at it as well. The, the, the link that he's accompanied with this tweet there, it says goodbye. And I thought, oh, that must be a, a YouTube link to the segment from Raw. No, it's that Free the Delete episode. He wants as many. Like, he's, he's, good. he's very, very good at what he does. That said, you know, money's still near the top of the list. Like, he still wants to earn good dollar he's and. Big money Mac, of course. Yeah, uh, and uh, Vince McMahon might just throw a lot of money to keep him there and do not a lot, as he has done with countless people in recent times. Yeah. I hope he goes to AEW because he, it, this is going to be his last hurrah, isn't it? This is it. This yeah. is it for Matt Hardy. Jeff might pop up there later. Uh, Jeff's contract is likely to be extended, but if Matt goes there, I think he'd probably end up having a lot of fun and he'd end up making a lot of guys as well. Sure, he can have these crappy little squash matches on Raw every once in a while, but he's got a, he's still got value to give. Exactly, that's it. He has still got value. And he can go to someone like AEW, like you say, and just have these killer matches with, with people on the up and up. And I think they, I think AEW tend to use the the older guys they've got. They haven't got many, but the older guys. It's a bit like the Paul Heyman idea, where like you have maybe one or two just like floating older guys that you work around, and that's it. Like Chris Jericho, who has been the champion, he's been at the top, but he's been in the ring with so many of the the new talent coming up and up. You know, guys like Darby Allen and uh, Jungle Jack, Luke Perry dot com, whatever Jim Ross is calling him this week. Um, there's so many of those people, and he's brought them along as well. Matt Hardy could be one of those guys that could do a Chris Jericho esque role. I agree. I, t I totally agree. It's a weird thing with WWE is like when he first came back and like. Not after the tag stuff, and he's doing the singles matches in squashes. And at the beginning, it was like, hey, these people are beating Matt Hardy. That's Matt Hardy. Mm. But he just kept losing, and then they become meaningless. AEW are very, very good at making guys, even without them winning. Chris Jericho, for example, puts people over, even though that his opponent doesn't win. And I think Matt Hardy could be used in a similar way. But also, I want to see one more ladder match as well. Oh. <laughs> no, he's up. No. If I was to say to you, Holler, no, not that one. It's the other one! <laughs> there's, there's a couple of hollers in WWE. Holla, holla, holla! I've got to stop singing in these. No, Kelly, you, Kelly, you never stop singing Kelly, 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 never give up the singing. <laughs> uh, Kelly, Kelly may be returning to WWE in a part-time role, like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> tomato, she's, tomato, you know? She's just going to come out and smash 
<laughs> like all oh, the entire women's Kennedy division. smash. Uh, so Jerry Lawler <laughs> talking on his podcast. Uh, so talking about the Rumble, saying he thought it was the best women's Rumble match that he's seen. I actually agree with that. I yeah, think it was a really fun one. I do as well. Um, he said it was a little bit NXT heavy, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he got a chance to talk to Kelly Kelly before the match. Uh, she's doing great, and from what I understand, we may be seeing more of her. She may be coming back on a semi-regular basis. God, what Kelly Kelly dream match do you want to see, Tom? Rhea Ripley. I want her to batter Ripley. Okay. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah. I wouldn't kill wrestling at all. It's a funny one. Like, she's got a lot of personality. She's got no, a lot of... No, she doesn't. Of... <laughs> she, she hasn't got any personality. She yeah. She's got a lot of wrestling acumen. No. She's got, <laughs> she hasn't got a lot of wrestling acumen. She's got a lot of uh, connections in the. Just, I'm, I don't understand. <laughs> you were trying to be all nice, weren't you? I'm really trying. Don't lie to them, Tom. They know. Oh, but it's. But what she's she's fu- You know what? She came up in a rough time for women's wrestling in WWE, and she gave her, gave her a damnedest, didn't she? She yeah, bloody did. And that's, that's got to be. That's got to be commended, but she was bad in every conceivable way, and I hope she doesn't come back. What is time. the what is the pull here? Who is the? Is it just like oh, she's attractive, isn't she? Isn't Maybe that's it. Maybe Vince has still got part of that mentality that people want to see. Because we're a bit beyond that. Now. Yeah, I agree. Of course, of course. We're very beyond that. Well, it's, 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 Vince it's funny because I watched the thing about um, Charlotte Flair. It was the Sports Illustrated. She did like a, a, a photo shoot, Sports Illustrated, and in this, she talks about how she she nearly lost it with WWE because she came into the company and because she didn't consider herself attractive to the level of WWE, like she was really struggling to get on. And I think that's fascinating how somebody like Charlotte Flair, who was such a talented performer, in, who came in just at the end of that era was almost sort of shoved out mm-hmm. because she she wasn't what she believed to be ostensibly attractive to WWE. And that's and, and that's a real sad indictment of what was. Really. Is. Well they should have had Kelly Kelly trainer. Exactly. If and Kelly, then Kelly Charlotte Flair would be good in the ring. <laughs> oh, <can> you, <laughs> she might win sometimes. Charlotte and Kelly one on one, bring the noise for that. Um, um, that's who she's gonna challenge. Forget going to NXT, they're doing Rhea. Oh Rhea was on Raw last night, wasn't she? Nah, it's gonna be Kelly Kelly. Oh. Kelly Charlotte. Yes, please. That's WrestleMania main event right there. I'm really trying to be nice about Kelly Kelly. Well, there's no point. We end with a little bit of speculation regarding a WrestleMania 36 match. Now, we have said for months that Roman Reigns versus The Fiend is on the docket for the big show. Not the big show. <laughs> He's just going to be hosting them for tea. <laughs> uh, but that match has been on the cards of WrestleMania 36 for a while. But Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio has speculated another outcome, which doesn't seem all that out of the out of left field. Yeah. Oh, I, Alarmingly I, so. Hold on to your hats, cowboys, because this is a well let's just let's just talk about it so on the uh, on the radio show Meltzer said the reality is as much as they've spent all year pushing the fiend as this unstoppable monster on the marquee for wrestlemania roman reigns and bill goldberg will have more fan interest speculating that that could be the match that the Fiend could drop the title to Goldberg. I mean, he's done it before, hasn't he? He's held the, he's held the belt leading up to WrestleMania. Well, he beat Kevin Owens, didn't he, oh, that time? And that's a thing. Drop the belt. I don't know. Okay, right. I'm, I'm doubt- like, this is speculation. This is absolutely speculation. I'm doubtful they do this because it, just because it's the Fiend, and I'd like to think after the Seth Rollins debacle that they have learned their lesson there. Mm. But also, it's Goldberg. Mm. And anything can happen in the Goldberg Wrestling Federation. <laughs> I am so fascinated by this Goldberg Fiend match at Super Showdown because it feels, I, I feel like every time, like, I feel like a lot of times during the, the Fiend's title run, they've painted themselves into a corner with where they go from here that make an a, a ending that makes it, that makes both guys look, you know, acceptable. We had Hell in a Cell. And like they, they painted themselves into a corner with that and had to go with a DQ and Hell in a Cell. Um, and I feel like they've painted themselves again. I disagree. Really? Because I don't think Goldberg needs to look good because he's old and he's done it all. There's no point. It, right. Spear, jackhammer, kick out at one. He gets up, 
Caught, catches him with a mandible claw, Goldberg taps out. That's what should happen. Goldberg doesn't need to look good. I don't, I don't care if Goldberg looks good or not. This is all about The Fiend and making The Fiend look fantastic. And I'll be really disappointed if they protect Goldberg in some way and do had something it, silly. Had it been anyone else, I'd agree. Okay. But um, Goldberg is very much one of Paul Heyman's sort of guys on Raw. I, I agree. Oh, I don't think that's going to happen. No, in the sense that... But that's what should happen. Yeah. Goldberg, if you don't know, like Paul Heyman sees Goldberg as... If you remember wrestling from the 90s, like the 911 type character, somebody, a legend that could come out, bash some guys and save the day. It feels... I do, And I feel like... I know, I know you said we don't need to protect Goldberg, because if he was to lose, he'd still come back and be all right. But he'd obviously have to go away for a while. Yeah. It I'm, depends who you yeah. want to invest in, doesn't it? And I think the investment should be made in The Fiend. Sure, you could have got we protect Goldberg, uh, hopefully not have him win, but something happened where he still looks good. Cool, fine. Mm. Uh, but eventually you've got to use him to put over somebody strong. I think it should be The Fiend. I think that's what should happen. Spear Jack Hammer kick out at one. <laughs> I think he should look the bollocks. I'd be on the bollocks. I'd be all right with that. As we say, speculation forever, friend. There's no confirmation this is the direction they're going in at all. It could all just be hokum. It could just be spear, jackhammer, one kick out. We will find out, won't we? We certainly will. And you will have an amazing Tuesday. You have to think about it every time, every don't you? Every single time. <laughs> all my days now blur into one. I'm trapped in here. Wonderful. See you next Tuesday. Take care. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.